No matter what rank you're in, you always need targeted advice that will help you climb to the next rank. And general advice can be good, but you need something that is more specific towards your problems in your elo. Now, I've coached and played in every rank, so let me give you my advice to climb to the next rank with ease. Now, press that subscribe button or I'm going to call up Blizzard and have them buff Malga again. So, let's get into it. Now, first off, let's talk about the bronze rank. And I think that there are two major camps within bronze. The first camp are players that have not really grinded the game a lot. And I have coached bronze players, a lot of them, and I look at their playtime, and they have played, you know, maybe 10 games in a season. They played very infrequently, and they expect to get better, and that's just not how you get better at Overwatch or any game. You need to invest time and effort into getting good at literally anything in the world, and Overwatch is not any different. If you're only playing a couple of comp games once every two weeks, you're not going to be playing enough to understand the characters, the mains, how they interact, how objectives work, how HP works, how anything works in the game. The more you play, the better you're going to pick up and absorb these things over time. And I'm not saying you have to play a ton, but I'm saying that right now, the thing that's going to improve you the best is to get more games in. Not watching guides, not researching, not watching streams, whatever. Get more games in. And still connected to that, I would say players that are stuck in bronze have really terrible settings. So it's the same kind of player where maybe they're trying to play Widowmaker and they have a sensitivity like 100x what it should be. I've seen this all the time when I'm coaching. You need to have reasonable DPI and sense, which I do have an aim guide that talks about getting the proper sensitivity. I coach bronze players that were stuck in bronze because they were playing on like an old desk that had a maybe five inch by five inch mouse pad. So they really couldn't move around at all or i've seen it to where their mouse is like from freaking 1998 like it's just an old piece of garbage so really all in all i think you need to make sure that your settings are reasonably in order your equipment isn't atrocious and you play the game quite a bit that's like most people in bronze you do that you'll get out of bronze now there's a second group of players that they are in bronze after doing all those things they have reasonable equipment they have reasonable settings they played the game a decent amount and they still can't climb out of bronze why First thing I would say is that they have fairly slow reaction time, especially within Overwatch, and this typically comes from players that they might have played Overwatch quite a bit, but they haven't really played any shooters that much or any high-paced games, and there is a learning curve to learn how to react to things appropriately and quickly, and that's only going to come with more time. If you're someone that Overwatch is your first FPS game, you need to expect to put more time breaking those habits in and it's like you might have a buddy that might have played a whole bunch of other games and they pop up to a high rank in overwatch right away because they already have that reflective memory they already know how to respond to things that happen and they're really good at doing that because they have practice so that's the first thing and then i think the second thing is players are trying to focus on the team strategy or team optimization as opposed to just individual play the easiest way to climb out of bronze is decent mechanical skill, reacting at an appropriate pace, and trying to find ways to have individual impact. The reality of it is in bronze, players are going to respond to things slowly, no one's going to help each other, and you're going to be able to get away with pretty much whatever you want if you operate at a faster cadence than your opponents, or a higher mechanical skill, or both. This is why if you took any higher ranked player, gold, plat, diamond, you threw them in a bronze game, they would literally 1v5 the lobby on any role, and pretty much any character they could do it on. Things like synergy, setups, combos, none of that particularly matters in bronze. More importantly, your individual play is going to take you very far. But after you do all these things, you're going to make it to the silver rank. And there's a little bit different advice I have for silver players than I do for bronze. It's mostly the same, but players are starting to understand the game quite a bit. They understand the characters. Everyone knows what they do. Everyone recognizes ultimates. There's not like this huge knowledge gap that can happen in bronze to that same extent. Most players in silver at least understand the basics of Overwatch and sometimes there'll be people with above average mechanical skill but basically silver players their biggest problem is they never ever do the bare bones fundamental things you need to do to stop feeding so staggering is a big one people trickling in one at a time no one's ever fighting together no one recognizes when their team has an advantage or a disadvantage so players are investing ultimates when their team is three down or people are running in thinking that they're winning the fight when their entire team is dead this happens more in silver than any other rank and it's because players recognize how to do what they want to do from their point of view but they don't really understand anything else about overwatch objectives team fights anything like that and players don't really fully grasp 
these concepts until later on, maybe plat diamond, but in silver, it's like knowledge at zero. Most players just don't have any of this knowledge, but then sometimes there will be a silver player that kind of knows these things, and the reason they're in silver is because their mechanical skill is like zero. So it's important to understand that every part of your skill matters like you can't just understand without being able to hit a shot doesn't matter if you know what to do if you can never execute it properly so silver is a place where there's a lot of ways to get out of silver but there's a lot of ways to be stuck in silver as well and i think it's really important that you hit things one at a time you focus on your mechanics you focus on your understanding you focus on most importantly not feeding if you're ever the first one to get picked off in a fight if you're ever the first one to die for any reason when your team is not also dying with you and especially if the enemies are not using ultimates you need to embrace that as a mistake look at why should you have ever backed up was there an opportunity for you to back up this is one of the most common things that i do when i vod review and coach silver players is we go and look at a lot of their deaths and they think that they didn't do anything wrong they're like oh why is my team with me or what is my team doing or look at my kills or look at my stats but then we go back and see it and we see so many moments where they pushed in when they should have pulled out. I'm kind of an expert on that, by the way. And they also invest ultimates and certain things when the fight is just simply not winnable. And I think a silver player needs to take accountability more than anything and work to try to minimize all of these free deaths, sloppy deaths, sloppy mistakes that I think could be really avoided easily if they just try to zoom out a little bit, address their own play, and start to improve their weaknesses one at a time and not make these major mistakes. Now, on top of that, I think a big part of developing just in general from here on out is you want to make sure that your hero pool is not super, super large. A lot of players, they will play a little bit here, a little bit there. I've coached a lot of players in silver where they're silver on tank DPS and support, and in every role they play like five characters so they're playing 15 characters total they're stuck in silver on all their characters and they don't really play that much a week maybe they play 20 hours or 30 hours or whatever the case may be how many hours are you playing on each character like one and i kind of break it down a step further you're playing maybe one hour on each character a week and that means that you're only playing that character on maybe two maps so tell me this let's say havana you play havana one time on genji but the next five times you play havana you play different characters how are you going to take what you learned about playing Havana on Genji and apply what you learned to the next time you play Havana, right? You don't really have the same context because you're constantly changing your characters. So it's really important that you minimize the amount of characters you're playing and you minimize your roles. Honestly, I would really suggest a lot of players that want to get better at Overwatch, learn Overwatch through the lens of consistency, meaning that you try to minimize the roles you're playing and the heroes that you're playing because this will actually make you better at the other roles in the long run like i think a player that hyper focuses on let's say support and they focus on only like three characters in the support role and they get those characters and that role to plat diamond the skills they learned and the speed that they learned will actually be so much faster and they will translate to the point where your other roles without even ever playing the other roles those roles and some characters within those roles would actually be much higher rank which is a weird thought because you're like wait i don't even have to play the characters in a different role in order to get better at that role not really because the trickle over goes from your highest role like whatever you get to the highest it will trickle over it's like the skill is oozing out and it's easier for you to develop when you focus on one role you focus on limited characters within that role i'm not saying you have to have like only two or three characters you can have more than that but try not to have 15 try not to have 20 try not to play the entire roster and i also think another problem happens to silver and gold players which we'll talk about in a second when they do this is that they always run away to another character they're like oh man they have her winston let's swap reaper oh man they have a widow let's swap sombra oh they have this let's swap that they're just like swapping all the time or the second they play a character that isn't even like a little bit not optimal in their minds they're swapping so they never learn how to play against problematic matchups or counters or anything like that and they're never really getting good or better at these characters they're only learning the counter game which is just not how you're going to improve you can't do that forever unless you can play the characters at a very very high level all the ones you're swapping to at a certain point it's not going to work anymore now moving up to gold gold is much of the same bronze and silver i would say like here when we get to gold mechanical skill becomes really important of course you know grouping up with your teammates all of that stuff not dying not getting isolated or getting caught out dying first all that stuff is still very important matching your team's pace of play starts to be a little bit important it gets really more important in plat when people have decent mechanical skills or you're going up against diamonds with decent mechanical skills but here there is like a mechanical threshold, I would say. So I would say really start to practice your mechanical skill. V-A-X-T-A, 
Vaxta, that's a good place to practice. Generally, just trying to focus on hitting criticals, being consistent with your mechanics. I have like a mechanical guide that you can check out, but really, once you start going up against low diamond players, all of the sudden, your mechanics need to be a certain level or else you're just going to get bodied. Like, I think there was a mechanical threshold up to this point or a range that can work, but after you get to plat, you're going to get completely bottlenecked if you don't develop further. So start now to build a routine to further your mechanical skill. Make sure you don't get lagging behind because then you'll kind of run into a roadblock where you're like, I need to get better at mechanics and I'm not there yet. And it's something that takes a long time. Like the sooner you start and build a routine, the further your mechanics will go without you hitting a bottleneck. Because I think that one of the things that I did way back when in Overwatch 1 is my game sense and understanding of the game. Because I would study and watch and research and VOD review all the time, scrim all the time. It outpaced my mechanics by quite a margin. And it led me to situations where I was stuck in Diamond, stuck in Masters for quite some time because my mechanics just weren't there. Like I understood and if I played some characters, some cheesier characters, I could actually climb. But for the characters that I actually wanted to play and wanted to grind, my mechanics just weren't there and I was getting outplayed in situations that I should win. So make sure you start this process and this journey to get better and higher mechanics earlier because it's like a constant work in progress. You need to start all the way down in gold. And while I don't think you need to understand big overarching strategies in gold or perfect like combos and everything, Everything like that i would say notice characters that synergize with you on your team and notice characters that counter you on the enemy team understanding where you can exploit things and what you need to mitigate this is super important and it's like bare bones level of understanding some of the higher bigger concepts in overwatch but i would just start trying to think about that now try to enable your synergies try to avoid or minimize the things that can counter you or maybe not try to directly confront them understand favored versus unfavored matchups things like that but we really get into a lot of these factors in plat and plat is where i think team fights start to legitimately happen team play starts to legitimately happen and there's a couple of core things that i think you really need to do in platinum if you want to make it to diamond and beyond besides mechanical skill we talked about that already of course you need to further develop that i think it's really important that you identify who has an advantage in a fight this is so damn important if it's a 5v5 and you're walking in understand my team has an advantage because i have all these ultimates or my team has an advantage because the enemy team is half health and we're full health so because we have an advantage we should press we should push maybe the enemy team used all their cooldowns and you realize hey our team has a huge advantage i want to play more aggressive respective of that advantage it's really important that you understand when your team should be pushing in and taking more space and when the enemy team has an advantage and they can push in and take space from you because as a general concept if the enemy team has an advantage they're going to be more aggressive and you should be more passive and reactive because you need time you need time to build your cooldowns back you need time to build your health back you need time to restabilize and this means that you're backing up giving space and so many plat players fail to identify when their team is winning or losing a fight and then they end up out of position because of it because your position constantly needs to change relative to the advantage and disadvantage if you are pushing forward while your team is backing up or you are backing up while your team is pushing forward there's going to be a mishmash here that is always creating missed opportunity and if you can read the state of play then you're going to be way better off than everyone in your rank and there's a couple of ways you need to do that the first one is look at who's dead and alive right if they're down two people and you're up all your people you're advantaged vice versa right and it's good to kind of keep a mental note one of them's dead oh one of ours is dead we're back to equal oh one of ours is dead now we're at a disadvantage let's play a little bit more passive oh one of theirs is dead now we're at equal so you're kind of trying to think of advantage disadvantage and it's going to change how you play and how you play different situations depending on that advantage and you need to learn to track this thing you should almost always be able to understand who has an advantage disadvantage like if i turned your monitor off mid fight i need you to tell me who has what alive like how many people are alive on the enemy team how many people are alive on your team who has the advantage in that regard there's a lot of layers to that right there is hp there's abilities ultimates is a big one because ultimates can change a numbers disadvantage and then there's even stuff like team positional advantage that comes up later on as you get to higher ranks but the most important thing i want you to focus on is the numbers and then past that most likely ultimates and abilities and hp like 
just start to think about advantage disadvantage and it's going to really help your positioning it's going to help you understand the pace of play it's going to make it so you die a lot less and get a lot more of these fights that you just kind of roll through and uh match the aggression of your advantage right anyways now we're in the diamond rank and once you're in the diamond rank you are pretty close to masters and masters players have very very good mechanical skill so of course you're going to need great mechanical skill to compete here and start to climb to the higher ranks of play you also need a really good understanding of matchups, what characters counter others, and by how much. Can you change your play style up to still be effective up against counters, or do you need to swap your character? It's important to understand when you're getting completely neutralized or when you're getting partially neutralized and how you can adapt your play to make it so you're still effective. It's also really important in Diamond to identify who is getting a lot of value. It's really common for a Diamond player to lose a game and blame the wrong person on their team or the enemy team for their loss, right? They think, damn, that Genji was popping off. And they don't even recognize that the Moira on the enemy team went like 25 and 1 and was constantly harassing your supports. And because the supports were being constantly harassed, their Genji got to kill them, like a lot, because their cooldowns were baited and all that stuff. So really, the Moira was doing a ton, but the Diamond player might not identify that. And it's important to not only look at stats, but kind of try to have a bigger understanding of what's happening to your teammates and who is getting the most value. Is it the tank? Is it the support? Is it the DPS? And trying to identify who is getting a lot of value can help you address the problem. Whatever role you are, whatever character you are, you can minimize the impact of the person that is getting a lot of value out of them. Now, if their whole team is just like firing on all cylinders, then yeah, good luck. But oftentimes there are people that are performing incredibly well and they're getting away with it. They're sneaking under the radar. Some characters are flashy and it's really avert when they're popping off. When a Widow gets a 4K, you're like, oh shit, okay, let's swap to counter her. But when a Zen starts to rack up kills, is never dying, applying discords, you might not notice that that Zen is being the real problem because you're not thinking about what your tank is going through. You're not thinking about the amount of pressure the Zen is outputting. So you need to start putting yourself in the shoes of your team more, identifying who is actually having the highest amount of impact, even if it's not always about the scoreboard or who's popping off. I would also say in general, it's really important in Diamond to understand what your team composition is trying to accomplish and if you can swap your pick or play style to match that. So we did talk about trying to match advantage, disadvantage, but also you want to try to match the pace of play of your team comp and the ultimate objective of your team comp right a dive comp they all want to kind of execute the same thing or they all want to enable the same thing a monkey jumps in cuts off supports for the rest of their team from the tank the tank has to peel you're creating a lot of space tracer goes in genji goes in you dive a backline blah 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 everyone dies right that has everyone with the same objective at the end of the day but if you have a sigma and a freaking sombra none of these characters are going to operate together now that doesn't mean you can't play them together but you need to understand that the sigma is not going to provide you the same level of resources or the same play as a ball or a winston and it's really important that you learn to adjust your play to match what your tank is trying to accomplish or what your team is trying to accomplish and this could be true for like if you need a certain type of heal being a character that is really greedy with heals when your team is not playing a comp that can supply that to you or if they do supply it to you they're playing it a way they shouldn't like a mercy that's constantly healing you instead of blue beaming you're enabling or you're encouraging the wrong play style for one of your supports because you're playing a pick that forces them to do so or else you feed and it's really important to understand that your pick and your play can have ramifications across the other characters and the other rules and i think that that's another big part of diamond is you're putting yourself in the shoes of your team you're really learning what they're like and then past that putting yourself in the shoes of the enemy what would they really not like you to do how do they really not like you to play what can you do to pressure the thing that they really don't want to happen these are the ways in which you start to get even more and more value and i think ultimately combined with good mechanics better positioning that you slowly start to build over time master's rank is right ahead of you now going on to master's rank there's a lot of things that a master's player is doing right but you're not really being evaluated on what you're doing right more so the things you're doing wrong and a master's player needs to start to slowly eliminate their mistakes their positioning mistakes the times that they're dying these things need to be eliminated but simultaneously a master's player still needs to try to do as much as they possibly can so that they have the highest impact it's kind of a balancing act because you want to do as much as you possibly can but you can't fly too close to that sun get singed and 
fall and feed right it's very easy for you to in the pursuit of trying to do more and carry harder be the one that ends up feeding and be the one that costs your team the fight so it's really important that you learn how to keep yourself alive play discipline to the point where you're really hard to punish and then from there start to increase your mechanical skill in those hard environments like situations where you don't get to wide swing or peak open space but you have a really tight angle or a really small window to hit a shot or get an ability off mechanics in those moments higher mechanics and fast reactions will allow you to perform better and faster in those moments and it will allow you to carry harder and not make it so that you have to leave cover leave good positioning play in a way that could get you punished just so that you could pull off any play at all it's a balancing act like i said and it's not easy to do but it's what you need to do in order to climb to grandmaster and beyond you need to start to improve basically every aspect of your play so that you can do more while be given less given less space given less room to make a play given less space to try to pull something off without getting harassed or killed or contested but you still need to pull off higher level impact higher level plays and it's not easy but i think the best thing that you could do is first off focus on your mistakes try to identify where your play is the weakest is it positioning is it game sense is it mechanics is it something specific what are you weak at address those things try to minimize the mistakes you're making do a ton of self vods where you look at your own codes and you try to find things that you could have done better and just take the things that you could have done better into the next game you play and just try to do those things better and constantly evaluate yourself and try to improve what you've already worked on find ways to try to get more value but still be safe and not make these huge mistakes and this is kind of what you have to constantly work on if you want to break through masters and get to grandmaster it's a long road but it's something that you can do if you are dedicated and you put enough time and effort into your personal development now once you're in grandmaster you were in the top freaking less than one percentile there's very few champions period and uh yeah to get past grandmaster to champion you basically need to be a semi-pro caliber player in the current moment. In order to get there, I think that really you need to try to eliminate all your mistakes and perform mechanically amazing and be able to perform mechanically amazing while under pressure at a faster cadence than other people. And all of this is going to be a combination of practice, VOD review, potentially coaching, repetition, advanced mechanical practice constantly developing your aim further and further and uh, probably a little bit of natural talent thrown in there as well something that's kind of hard to understand but it's absolutely true the difference between like a grandmaster player or like a top one percent player and a pro player a pro level player that gap is bigger than the gap between a bronze player and a grandmaster and you're like what the heck that's like seven ranks for just a little bit longer top one percent surely you're just right there but no, you're not. You're not even close. And the reason is, at the highest level, everything is compounded. Everything is perfected. Everything is done better, faster, more mechanically excellent, with less mistakes. And uh, that all kind of compounds at the highest level even more so, to the point where, in order to make the jump from bronze to grandmaster, that might be 2,000, 3,000 hours. But in order to make the jump from grandmaster to pro... That might be another 10 on top of that. Anyways, I'm not trying to dissuade you. I'm just trying to be realistic about the differences between every single rank and how to get them. But if you enjoyed the content, please smash the like, subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And thank you so much for coming by. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.